Hello everybody, I am currently broadcasting from from Virtual Ryuku and I am here with the founder and co-founder of Virtual Ryuku and their names are Richard Lavassa and Silver Fox Rainbow, I shall say <coughs> uh, but I shall be calling Richard in Inyasha or Inu for short and would you like to introduce yourself in you? Well, I, uh, my name is Richard, uh, Inuyasha in here, uh, because most people know me as under that name in Second Life, so I kept the name. Uh, I've been in Second Life for over eight years and working on my own grid for the past four years. I discovered OpenSims software, which was originally Second Life's code that they put out in, under general public license, and a lot of programmers got together and volunteered their hard work to make it into something that not everybody could use. It doesn't have a perfect booklet of information telling you how to do it. You kind of have to learn as you go, and due to a lot of help, in a couple of email forums and groups that I've joined, I was able to learn what I needed to know to start my own grid. Okay, now the first question I'm going to ask you, which is uh, a lot of, which I'm guessing a lot of people are going to want to know, and that is, what is Ryuku? Um, well, my the grid itself is supposed to represent an old time in history before Japan actually took over and turned Okinawa into its own prefecture. Before Okinawa came into existence, it was part of the Ryukyu Island chain, and that island chain was its own culture. It used to be called the Ryukyu Kingdom. It was a major port of exchange between many of the other uh, South Asian countries like China, uh, Korea, Japan, Tibet, India, and so on would all bring things using boats, of course, to the port in Ryukyu, and they would ship it out from there to other countries. It was a major port, and it had a whole different culture. It wasn't Japanese, it wasn't Chinese, it was very much influenced by Chinese because it was close and it used to have several kingdoms that fought for uh, the word I'm looking for basically it they all wanted China to sign papers to say that they were the government to deal with and then China made all kinds of deals to trade things like lacquerware and many things that the Chinese didn't have and they'd swap back and forth and eventually China went into this um, they really didn't want to send their own ships out to do this so they hired the Ryukans to take their ships and sail them all around that area and bring their their goods from China all around that all around Asia without having to send their own crews so they would go to Okinawa and say, well, you have brave sailors, we'd like to use your sailors to go to these places that many of us are worried about going to, and the Okinawans were brave enough and needed the money enough to actually do it. So I'm trying to model that time period, because in that time, it was the golden era for Ryuku, and it's very beautiful, I love their culture, their art, and their music, so I'm trying to show some of it here in hopes that other people will enjoy it too. Okay. Right, okay, the next question I will be asking you is what are your plans for Ryuku? <coughs> well, I'm hoping to build it up and get to the point where I have several villages including Shuri Castle. Shuri Castle is going to be the crown, crown of this whole area. People will be able to go visit the castle in a virtual world people that can't afford to actually go to the real castle. The real castle is open to the public and is a huge tourist attraction and a historical um, a historical landmark. I don't know if you've heard of UNESCO, but it's a 
huge organization dedicated to saving historical sites around the world and it's actually been listed as an UNESCO site so it's been saved and kept up and people go there from all over the world just to see it it's beautiful it's got lacquered woodwork golden dragons lots of designs that have been around for centuries and people come to see it but like me I'm disabled legally blind diabetic with a kidney transplant who can't afford to go see the real one but I have plans and sketches and photographs of all over the place in that castle and can use it to reconstruct it in here so other people like me who can't afford to go can actually come to a virtual world and come see it. So you are planning to to open up Ryuku as a as I'm guessing a learning aid. Uh, a historical learning aid and a place for some virtual tourists to show up and hopefully join in a lot of things like Ryuku dance, uh, special events. I have an entire calendar of what happens throughout the year for both just dances and parties and special celebrations. They call them Matsuri. Um, there's a lot of times like when they're doing harvest festivals. I'm going to have those. I'm going to have religious events like the purification festivals at Koshinto shrines and different things like that. I want people to actually come in and virtually live here. Uh, there's going to be some role play in here in that case. They'll be able to come in and take the place of a farmer. I want people that might want to be uh, Noru. Noru are ancient priestess of the Koshinto religion. Uh, fishermen and so on. And that way there they can be assigned a house here depending on what they want to be. They'll be given the tools. Like if you're a fisherman, you'll get a boat, your netting and so on. And you can actually go out and catch fish. You'll take those fish to market, make some, some money in here. Which the money has nothing to do with real world money. It's just kind of play money. So that you have the money to buy better objects than what you're given. You might be given peasant clothes when you start, but if you want to work your way up to being able to afford special dyed clothing with all kinds of bright colors called Bingada, then you're going to have to do the work you need to do to come up with the money to go to other villages and explore and find a shop that sells these things and buy yourself something nice. Okay, now... Just a big virtual world with hopefully people to make this place into a decent village and a community. Okay, right. Now, one question I would like to ask is... <clears throat> what will people be able to do in order to help out Ryuko to make this place thrive? Well, I haven't added it yet, but I'm going to put a PayPal donation uh, link on my webpage in hopes that somebody could help me all along the way because I'm trying to currently save up some money to get a decent server so that everything will run smoother. Um, it's a little laggy right now because the more I build the more strain I'm putting on my system. It's currently only a 4 core 8 gigabyte machine and I'm trying to run 56 regions. I currently only have a couple of regions with a lot of builds on it, but I've noticed lately that these regions are becoming slower. I'm saving up for an AMD bulldozer multi-core machine. It's going to have 16 cores. The total eventually will get to 32 cores, and everything will run nice and smooth. I'm hoping that I have a faster asset server than SL by going and changing completely to a solid state drive and these things cost money. So far I've got half of what I need saved up. It might be sometimes in May by the time I get the system I want. The other thing is I, I, have, I have just recently gotten a few scripters who might come in and help me. Um, you're one of them. Um, but as far as building goes, I'm very, very picky. I need things to be built realistically, weathered, decent textures so everything looks realistic. And at the same time, I want them historically accurate. 
so the people that would build for me would actually have to know what they're doing and do a little research to find out what buildings actually looked like so they can get a good idea and build them to specs. I don't want somebody coming in with cars and airplanes and so on, so I'm not connected to what's op what OpenSim calls the hypergrid. That's when everybody shares the assets on another asset server that shares things like other regions that have skyscrapers, airplanes, and spaceships. I don't want those here. This has to be historically accurate. From clothing to houses to the things that were done to the utensils. Every, everything needs to be just historically accurate. You can't just go and bring something from a later date like the 1700s or 1800s into a sim that's not supposed to be any later than 1609. Okay, is So there... I'm not connected to other grids. <clears throat> okay, in you? Okay. Right, yes. um, Silver, is there anything you would like to add on to this? No, oh, I'm okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Silver does a lot of texturing for me. Uh, I'll give her something that I might have found on the internet that fits the 1600s theme. But Basically, we, what I do is I, I take the texture from an existing thing, like something that's from the net, and I redraw it to make it look like it did back in the 16th century. So if, um, for example, an old picture that looks weathered and it looks like it's faded, uh, my job is to redraw it and to make it look like it did back in, our ti in the time period that we're working in. Basically, so it's kind of a version of restoration. Yeah, it's like a restoration. Um, style thing is what I do, and I also met help with making clothes and stuff that fit the timelines. We had to um, do some research because Okinawan clothing is not quite the same as Japanese clothing. It's more Chinese influenced, um, so a lot of styles and, um, and the outfits have been borrowed from Chinese culture. So a lot of people seem to think um, Okinawa has always been a part of Japan, but it actually has closer ties to China. Back to her restoration, um, I see it a lot in Second Life. Uh, people go in and they might make an Egyptian sh uh, an Egyptian sim, and as it turns out, they go inside of their pyramid. And they'll have all kinds of, you know, ancient calligraphy and stuff. And the, the texture they use is actually something that they've seen in a museum that's 500 to 1,000 years old. And they're trying to make it look like their characters are dressed like ancient Egyptians. Well, the things on the wall would look much newer because it was supposed to be just painted then. I don't want to be hanging scrolls in here that look like images that you get from the internet that are showing these scrolls and they're over 500 years old and crumbling. So she takes a look at the pictures I send her and then redraws them and makes them on newer paper as if they were just recently drawn because 500 years ago they'd be brand new. So of course they're supposed to look newer. You can't just hold, uh, hang an old scroll and have it look like that's today. If you understand what I mean. Yes, I understand what you mean. Because it's mainly just for authenticity and it, that's how it would have looked back then. Not trying right. to rip parts of what it looks like now and stick it back then because that would not work. Because a lot of people forget that. I just, I noticed that a lot in Second Life, I said, okay, I'm fixing that here. I'm not going to do that. Okay. I have several <clears throat> scrolls hanging in my dojo down the road from here. And they're all refurbished and, and redone by Silver. Okie dokie. Right. <clears throat> okay, anybody who... Right. Okay. Uh, in you, I don't suppose you haven't had the link to your website available uh, available offhand, do you? Yes, I do. 
Ryukyu, R Y U K Y U, dot DNS Dojo, DNS D O J O, dot com. Okay. Right. Anybody who is interested in learning more about Virtual Ryukyu and, and, and what it's about, head over to to his website. The link will also be in the description. And feel free feel free to uh, would you be okay with me mentioning your in your SL username if people are more interested that's fine with me okay I believe your SL username is the same as in here correct yes it is okay. that's why I didn't want to confuse people when I kept the name my display name in second life is UQ which means eternal in Japanese okay what it's doing? a little joke. I feel like I've been doing this eternally. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anybody who would like to see him, feel and if you're on Second Life, feel free to contact him, and he can tell you a little bit more about about Virtual Ryuku. The link to his website will also be in the description, as I said earlier, and I shall see you all I'm next time. I'm still working on some of the links okay. on my webpage, just so you know, right at this moment. Yeah, so be, so be aware the the links, a few links may not work at current, as this video right. is being posted. But and <clears throat> the next video I will, I will be doing will be an interview with the Dragonflame team for Relay for Life. Due to the fact that I tried to record it prior to this, but unfortunately the recording kind of derped and did not want to record my own audio, so. I shall see you all next time. It's goodbye from me and everybody else. Would you like to say goodbye? Goodbye, everybody. I hope you stop in and check my page out. Goodbye for now. And we'll see you all next time. <laughs>